Joe. I can dig that. All right, yo. So if you don't know, if you don't know about this, you can watch the video. I'm never going to tell you to not watch it for yourselves, okay? But getting off the highway, we end up stop. This man, the show is about to happen. Can we just see the trooper drive right in front of us? At the top of the hill. Let me double check. Down to the it's road. Down to the road. The top of the hill. Keep an eye out. Right here. Look it. Right there. One. Right there. That's a local cop. So the first one was a state trooper in an SUV. Probably fueling up. Right over at the Storts. Now, Colony PD, westbound on Route 7. Drives right by us. I, those two didn't think being over the line was worthy of a stop. Okay. Now, and look, I'm trying to give you an abbreviated... All right, we'll put this at the three-minute mark. Three-minute mark. Okay. Here he is. Turn him off. The guy is out of his car oh, and on my bike instantly. I said don't put, give okay. me my shit. I'm not going to sit here and watch Yo, this whole thing fuck, over bro? again and give you a narration. Yo. Yo, give we me have my reviewed shit. this footage. But Sit back, did you see funny. me commit a fucking crime? I got reports to you. I don't give a it. fuck. Did Dude, you see me? took my key. I wasn't happy. I wanted my key. Tell me what I did. Tell me what's going on. He didn't do that. Okay? All, a lot of the comments. Look, a ton of support, and I appreciate the support. So what actually happened? Here's what I can tell you. Is I, I was released. I was issued a ticket for my license plate, not being over the line, not based on some report. I was issued a ticket for my license plate. I also received from my buddy Nick here. Commit a fucking footage. Who's the other one that just We go forward. I'm fine with it on video. Yeah. And I'll seize it for evidence. No, you won't. No, you won't. I didn't break a fucking crime. You got his phone up, right? See it? Sit. Yeah. Sit down. Right, you know what? Put your hands on I your go head. to no. sit. Let me sh look at my leg goes up and I'm going to sit on my bike. And then. Behind your back. I'm getting handcuffed. Okay. He's telling me he's going to seize my cameras as evidence. Sit down. Sit down. Watch. Okay. Going to sit down. Pulls me off my bike. Put my hands behind my back. I didn't fucking do shit. Yo. Get my helmet off. Trying to take, I want to take my helmet off. I'm already like, dude, I got to get out of this helmet. Got to get out. Can't be in the helmet. Got to get out of the helmet. It don't matter. You, you pit us for no reason out of fucking life, dude. I'm not. Stop no, resisting while my hands are behind my back. And he had to get that last shove in. Just disrespectful. Disrespectful. Unacceptable. This is not how police should be acting with anyone, let alone bikers. All right? I'm not saying this is a biker only thing. I'm saying the cops shouldn't be acting like this, period. But the reason I put this video out is to show bikers, newer bikers, and experienced bikers what can happen. Guys, gals, it can be, there can be dangers that you never even would have imagined. So two cops go by us, no big deal, and out of nowhere, this guy shows up. Now we need to look at something else. So I got handcuffed, and I freaked out. Look, guys, I freaked out. I had a full-on panic attack. 
I, I, am, I am claustrophobic. If I'm put in a confined space, it causes a panic attack. My heart rate increases. My breathing is difficult and labored. I don't respond well to it. When I'm putting a motorcycle helmet on, I don't have a panic attack every time. I don't feel the claustrophobia set in because I can remove the helmet. Apparently, and I learned this that night, that evening, apparently, when I lose the ability to remove the helmet, it triggers the panic attack. The claustrophobia sets in. I, would, I, I was in the helmet for two minutes, and I'll play it, because I yeah, continue I'm to ask him to take matter? the helmet the dude, off. It don't matter. Investigating what? Investigating what, bikes? Telling him, hey, call my cousin. What are you investigating? He's a trooper. Spotlight. I don't care. Yo, okay, bro, please take my helmet off. You're over the line. Really? That's, dude, how would you know that we're over the line the, before you pulled up? You pulled up, cut us off. There's no way you knew that anyone was over that line. But that he, he, he's making it about all of these different things. He's making it about the biker that took off. He's making it about the reports. But he's not telling us anything. What did I do? Me. Specifically me. And, uh, you know, if you want to tell me what the other two guys I'm with, what they did, fine. Go ahead. Educate and inform. But I'm more concerned with what did I do? Because I'm the only one there that, that got his key pulled. I'm the only one there that wants to know what happened, and I'm the only one there now in handcuffs trying to get out of my helmet. Yeah. Look, I, I wanna know right there, I tell him. Back it up, right here. Look, yeah. pull the straps, take the helmet off. I, I wanna know nope. why we're being detained. He just turns and walks away. No, no I'm, 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 so, it, I swear to God, it was, it was like torture. It felt like an eternity, and it was the most unpleasant experience, one of the most unpleasant experiences I've ever had in my whole life. And it's not. It, it is not right. Never should have happened. Still to this day, I have no idea what his reports were, and if they were you know, so egregious, you think they would have been like knocking on the door and arresting people if it was such a criminal activity that was being conducted. But, you know, there was nothing. This guy just went out of his way, went way out of his zone. What do I mean by that? He went out of his way and way out of his zone. So I'm going to pull that up next. We're going to go to maps.google.com, and we're going to do... Wade Road, Latham, New York, to NY Trooper Brunswick, NY. Brunswick, Harley. Okay, here we go. Directions. From here. Okay. Chipotle, Latham. Okay, there you go. So, I don't know what this guy's zone is, but this looks like the most direct path. And via New York 7, 10.5 miles. This guy is from here, and he has us pulled over. Right here. 
right at this intersection, right here. This guy from his base barracks, he's, he works out of here and he has us pulled over all the way up here. And maybe you think that that's normal. Maybe you think that's, that's normal, that's uh, acceptable. Maybe you think that's acceptable. Well, we just had two cops drive by us. One state, one local, and here's the kicker. You ready for the kicker? The kicker to all of it. Nope, that's not it. Right here. New York State Police Troop G headquarters, dude. Headquarters, yeah, that's right. You can see the intersection from here to here. What is that distance? New York State Police Troop G headquarters. There you go. Oh, I guess it's 0.4 miles. We're within a half mile. So why was the trooper from 10 and a half miles away the one to uh, pit us or intercept us or, you know, this blockade style traffic stop? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you what the reports are. Couldn't tell you anything about why he was there. What I can tell you is we have some additional Fucking footage. Get it the fuck. So oh I'm trying. I'm freaking out. Get it's it been two minutes. Off. Get it the fuck Get off, out. dude. He's pulling the what? helmet up. He's pulling the back of it up. It's covering my eyes. He's pulling the front of it up. Dude, I'm already... Well, like so far past asking anything. Like I said, I actually said, please, please take my helmet off. It's undone. Grab the straps that are hanging down. I lifted my head up. I said, pull them out to the side and lift it straight off my head. That's all he had to do. And this whole freak out never would have happened. So he ends up, and I got to tell you, we're kind of laying into him here. Collectively, we're all laying into him. We're like, dude, what are you doing? Why would you give him shit? Yeah, why would you give him shit anyways? Like, don't give him fucking any info, dude. He's telling me, he's threatening me. You don't give me your name, you're going to be arrested. Nick's like, dude, don't give him any info. I'm like, dude, I'm already in handcuffs. Like, right? Nick and Pri are like, yeah, it's all on camera, dude. Like, what's, what's the reason? I mean, there's a cop that passed us, another state trooper that passed us, and this asshole wants to be fucking... Rich, get down here ASAP. Wife called me. I had to answer. That's where I answered the phone with my nose. I think that's on the original video. Hilarious. Dude, I'm giving a... I, he, he wants my date of birth and name. I give it to him, and he's like, you didn't give it to me right. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes, I did. It's all on film. It's all on film. The guy was a mess. He had zero professionalism, zero ability to de-escalate, zero ability to communicate what he was even doing. So you have to take this, guys, as a potential. There's potential, and, and, and this is not the only video that I've seen where cops are just a, going after bikers, man. They're just pulling up, taking keys, handcuffing. Like, none of it's cool, dude. None of it. You guys can't be doing stuff like this. You, you got to follow your uh, policies, procedures, and protocols, and maybe it's time to revisit them, okay? I know police. I know a few cops, 
And I talked to them about this. And they're like, they told me, never should have gone down like that. The guy should have identified himself. He should have said what he was doing. And he should have taken control over the situation. Said, look, sit. you got to sit back down on your bike. The reason I'm here is this. And say it. But he didn't. He just took, here's, I'm going to give you your key back. You're not going anywhere. I need you to take your helmet off and give me your uh, driver's license because you don't have a license plate on your bike, right? So, okay. I, I could see a trade in, in something like that, you know, but there's probably a million other things that he could have said or done. I'd love to hear from you. Drop it in the comments. What, what, how could the cop have acted? What could he have said or done to, Tone it down, bring it back down, get it under control, and get us on our way, okay? Because we're missing our golden hour photo shoot, photo op. That's what we were going to do. And I'm going to show you where we were going because guess what? We just got some awesome footage the other day, and I'm going to share it with you. So eventually... Why did he take off? Why, why did he take off? off? Everybody is going. Well, look, 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 look. And, and we're all no, telling them the same thing. You caused this. You were unsafe. What are you doing? You still haven't told us, and now you're making it about something new. Who's the guy that took off? Why did he take off? No matter handcuffs. Go find him Take and him ask him. How about that? Take him out of handcuffs. He did nothing fucking wrong. You did more wrong than he did, bro. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. You know, this, this fucking guy right here pulls out in the middle of fucking traffic. What are you doing? Okay. I'll make this video. I'll take this and I'll put it up, guys. Okay? So if you want to watch this one in its entirety, go for it. But Nick comes over. He's asking a lot of questions. I want to play this part for you, okay? Who is this guy? That's what I want to know. Who is this guy? This guy is in civilian clothes. Here he is again, okay? So I'm going to play this maybe 30, 45 seconds, 30 to 60. Listen. Bikes are legit. Everything is legit. Yeah, I'm fucking legit. Everything is legit. But I'm not giving my info for suspicion pull or for no fucking reason. I don't even I'm not going. I'm getting this on fucking camera, dude. This is just fucking truck here. This is just fucking power. Power trip. Who are you? Who are you? I'm with these guys and we're pulled over for no reason. I'm with him. All right. Okay, did you hear that? Nick says, and who are you? And the guy's reply was, who are you? No. So Nick answers him. Well, I'm here with these guys, and we're pulled over for no reason. And this guy says, I'm with him. Now listen, there's some clues hey, here. Why is he doing this? Don't know it's his stop. Don't know it's his stop. So it's not your stop, buddy? Oh. Is that like cop lingo? And why would a cop let a civilian stand around out of his vehicle in the middle of the road? So this is another cop. Okay. Who the fuck are you? Who are you? You're supposed to identify. Now that you're in the mix, you've involved yourself in this professional capacity while off duty, you're a public servant. When you're asked who you are, you identify yourself. That's what public servants okay. have to do. Turn green. Okay. Well, directly in front of us, no hesitation. It wasn't here. I got here, he's bouncing around. I just asked if he needed help. Well, he doesn't need help if he didn't. If he just mind his fucking business. He's got a job to do like everybody it's else. Not, it's not. He's got a job to do. The famous words of a tyrant. He's got a job to do like everybody else. Who is this guy? Can we find out who this guy is? If you find out who that guy is, he's, we don't have a super clear image of him on film. 
what I showed was probably the best. I lucked out on that frame. Good job. It's on a base suspicion. Pull us over at a fucking light. When another state trooper went by us, a colony cop was next to us. You hear the sirens? They're all coming here. <laughs> They're all coming to this location. Like, they just caught freaking Bonnie and Clyde here or something. I don't even know. It's wild. I mean, the sirens going nonstop. And this guy, whoever he is, you know, seems to be You're not the in driver's some... license? Huh? You have a permit only? I have a permit. He has a license. Yeah, dude, he's, license he's with he licensed. He's, he's with endorsed uh, motorcycle license. His wife is on the way. She has a license. Everybody we all, everybody license. except Bree had a license. So he was legit. Last couple years. Yeah, we got to... hear me in the background you wonder why I'm just, I'm just waiting for him to return your id and make sure you don't have any suspensions or anything oh, no you can't go anywhere until you have one of these guys right, right. i mean well, i'm, I'm not going nowhere i'm staying bro yeah i'm staying too i'm just saying I just, because this, 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 like yo he's he's pissed off because they fucking took him immediately without even asking fucking questions hello that was that was long hey Witness the violation of the vehicle that's, traffic that's law. Violation, sir. Yep. And then you act irate, and now you're in handcuffs. Well, I mean, you did get out of your car and directly. Okay, yo. All right. Sorry. I had to take a step away. I had to step away and tend to a few things for wifey. So. Because what? I just had one of you. We don't know who him. this other guy okay, was. Dude, what's going on? So I don't why you didn't go after him and we're all legit at this point we got either colony either cop either we got the trooper several so other troopers are going to show up and And that's what we have for that. So I promised you more and I meant it. We got some more. Where did I put it though? Oh man. I think. It's right here. So, this is from, I don't know, in the past week. Some of you may have seen it. It's not up on the channel yet, but it is in a live stream. So it was just, just my buddy Nico, Nick, and, uh, and my buddy Brian. Brian, I, I haven't seen Brian in over 30 years, dude. Long time, it's been a long time. This full size. Okay, that looks good. So, I want to get to the part. There's some good ride. I just great shots. This is the golden hour footage. Okay, oh, we can back that up. This is golden hour footage. So, an hour before sunset starts golden hour. And that goes to maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes past sunset just get this really really good lighting and just a, a nice nice vibe right and that's what we were setting out to do you can actually see the leaves are starting to change the leaves are starting to change a little bit we do a little wheelie there all right okay we're just riding off into the sunset baby we'll play a quick Quick little 10, 20, 30 seconds here. Look at this. This is my buddy Brian. He's at this point, he's only been riding a month. One month. Never really been on the highway. Not that this was like a big highway ride. But we were getting on and off doing it's a two and a half mile loop. It's a two and a half mile loop. That's what it is. I wish I, I knew how to run Google Maps. Because I, I would put the route in there. Anybody local, you should. It's a great, great little track for like warming up, warming up the tires, 
shaking the rust off. It's close to the house for wifey and I, so we'll hit that two and a half mile little track. And it has good left and right hand turns. Okay, that's good, that's good. All right, we hand that off. So I get here in that I position, am. switch with you. I want to be in the same position with a couple buddies at approximately the same time of day. Look at the sun, the sky, it's here. almost identical. I, to get some well, I don't think we could have timed this more perfectly. I'm in the same position. Dude, that looks, I mean, intersection. maybe one or two more laps it would have been a little see. closer, but I feel Over like we're darn close. Line. That sky looks awfully similar. Sun might have been down just a Nothing little bit more. more. This is where all the drama happened because I stopped over the line. We're just looking at the happy sky. <laughs> the yeah, I know. Such a criminal. Nice truck, dude. But now I stay all vigilant as a motherfucker. Smoke. I'm like all cracked out. <laughs> Staying vigilant. Dude, this all I could do tours. Out, Anybody want to take like, a tour oh where I lost my shit, got handcuffed in a helmet? Oh Whatever shit, I'm we're out of here. Oh my god, we made it! Yes, we fucking made it, baby! Oh my god, I fucking needed that. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Holy oh, yeah. moly. This is the this is where we were trying to go that night. This is what we were trying to catch. We got this run. So yeah, we're basically, you know, we're gonna. We're gonna offer guided tours for this amazing ride. Now I think you should go ride it, yo. Go ride this ride if you're around here in upstate New York. Here's the map. It's not the even really a ride. Is, it's just it's a destination. I'll be here within 20, 30 photos. minutes. Of I would sunset. love to go, like, head there one Try night that. and see a bunch of other bikers there. That'd be awesome. Nick's fucking out. So we got the straight road. And I suppose. Yeah, dude. If you're into wheelies and stuff I hear at you. the right time of day, you'd be okay. As long as there's no traffic, no trucks pulling in and out. I'll run that road, take a look at the condition of it, make sure there's no roadborne hazards. There are some gravel parking lots. Dude, uh, that thing will eat you alive. Adjacent to this this road here. And I it's think just we'll a cool spot. Probably cool eat you spot. alive, I don't know for sure. How far? A quarter, eighth, whatever. There's Brian. We're on that Buell. That's cool. Dude, think about my buddy Brian, who's 50 years old and just started running. Dude, imagine your life being two and a half times what it currently is and you just what I was trying to stay, say is imagine never riding, never having that visceral experience until you're almost 50 and, and, and you meet up with somebody you haven't seen in 30 years who's been out riding and, and, uh, and they take you on you know this, this short little track and you're getting some of those lefts and rights in, and right? And then your destination, boom, you're driving and, and you just, you come over that hill and you see the sky, the sunset, man, that's got to feel great. Dude. Just start riding, doing what you're doing now. And dude, you just come over the hill and you see the. I'll play the rest of it. The sunset, dude. You know this guy? Who is it? Oh, no shit. I usually go right through this way. Just cut through this parking lot and park. You know, you can stage up like right there, that barricade. You know, that's a cool backdrop. It's a cool backdrop over here on the right. And and that's what we did, man. We you know we just went back to the spot that I was trying to get to that night. You know, for all all the drama that went down that night, this is how I got my closure. Dude, so, there's so much we'll cool just get, like, subject a matter little here. Here, I'll turn my view. There we go.
Okay. So here's what I have to say. Everybody wants to know the details. What happened? Well, I filed a formal complaint. And filing the formal complaint, it wasn't as easy or straightforward as it should have been. In hindsight, there was a sergeant there uh, the night that it happened, and he offered to take my complaint. Right then, maybe not right there, but right down at headquarters. And I should have taken him up on that, but I was, I was exhausted, overstimulated. It was, it was not, it, it just wasn't the time. So the following day, I started making calls and I got in touch with a supervisor and it ended up being the supervisor for Trooper Cusack, and his name was Sergeant Alarcon from the Brunswick. Same thing, Troop G, Ed, or Troop G, Zone One, Brunswick. So Sergeant Alarcon, when we first spoke, he told me that in order for me to file a complaint, I was going to have to come to the Brunswick Barracks. And he was going to read me my rights. And then that's how he would take my complaint. I thought something was off with that. Because if a cop is reading me my rights, I'm not a lawyer, but I know, you don't say anything after that. You, you shut your mouth. So... I told him I'd get back to him, and I did the following day. And when I got back to him, I said, look, I'm not, I'm not buying the uh, whole Miranda, Mirandizing, or you're going to read me my rights. Why don't you meet me at Troop G headquarters? Because me coming out to Brunswick, uh, that doesn't work for me. And, and really, for a number of reasons. You know, the traffic on Hoosick is horrible, always, every day, any time of day. It's not good. So I wasn't going to deal with that. And when I told him to come to Latham, because I live pretty close to Troop G headquarters, and when I told him to come to Latham at Troop G headquarters, what do you think his response was? Well, I mean, the traffic for me to get back here, I, you know, that's going to be an issue. Well, no kidding, buddy. No kidding. <laughs> Duh. So, I also told him that I had done a little research, made some calls, and spoke to a few people. And that he, he shouldn't be reading me my rights unless he's arresting me. And I asked him flat out. I said, you have something to arrest me for, then you need, to, you need to tell me or come do it. No, no, you wouldn't be under arrest. I have to get your statement. You know, you have to, you have to swear that it's true. Okay, sounds like you're going to take a deposition. So depose, and uh, I believe you can do that anywhere. So I'll tell you what. I'm not going to meet you at Brunswick, and I'm not going to meet you at Troop G headquarters in Latham. You can come to my house, and you can take my statement. And when he got here, I didn't invite him in. I told him I'll sit in his car, and I had everything that I wanted to say was written out. So I gave him my statement line for line. I waited a few months. I called back to Sergeant Alarcon to find out what happened. And he couldn't tell me anything. So I have no idea. I have no closure. And it, although it doesn't sit well with me, at this point, this ride right here that I just showed you is how I constructed my own closure. Right, wrong, or indifferent. I've called, I don't know how many different attorneys. None of them 
will touch it because it's the state police. If it was a municipal a sheriff, town cop, then yeah, they they would um, they'd go after them for civil rights violation. I don't know how to do all of that. I don't know how to file any of the motions or lawsuits for my civil rights violation. I don't know how to, you know, sue them for the the pain and suffering and you know borderline torture being handcuffed in my helmet for no reason, for failure to identify when he clearly didn't ask me for ID. So I want y'all to learn from this. If nothing else, how not to act when you're pulled over, if they take your key. And I can tell you this, the way I acted isn't how I would act today. That's not how I'm moving out there right now, all right? I'd be cool. Be chill. And and just when I was riding harder than I ride today, when I was out stunting on the highway and terrorizing the streets in 2005, I rode like a madman. I didn't run all the time. You know, we all have our stories, right? Or I, I received over 30 tickets that riding season on my bike. And, and, and all the times that I was pulled over, I never acted like that. So I think it was a culmination of all the other things I had going on and just my state of mind was not, was not good. I had a lot of negativity in my life, which I have since cleansed and removed from my life. My message now is, and my mission, is that I'm trying to become the absolute best version of myself that's possible. And when I become the best for me, that allows me to give the best to my loved ones, to my family, and to the growing community here on Bravo Moto. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. The recent growth has been amazing. I'm impressed and I'm appreciative. I love you guys so much. And I can't wait to see where the channel goes, where this initiative goes. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving forward, charging forward and doing great things. I want to continue to bring some entertainment, some education. I want to have conversations that lead to education and give you things to work on and apply or the application part and the methodology when you're out riding, when you're out on two. I love motorcycles, man. I love riding. To be able to do that with my wife by her side is like a dream come true. It's how we started our relationship. I can only imagine what it will be like when we're out there with Bella and Mikey and Vinny, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We have some big things working in the works. We're looking to expand our reach and our content, diversifying it with a podcast that has been a little bit of a pet project and something that I've been trying to figure out. Well. From time to time, I come across candidates, individuals who I think would be absolutely awesome to have on the podcast. I'm in conversation right now. I can't name drop because it's not a, it's not a, excuse me. I can't name drop because it's not a lock. It's not a guarantee. But keep an eye out. I think we might come to terms, and I think that it's something we can produce and publish in relatively short order. And it's the right guest to kick off Street Stories by Bravo Moto Official. 
it's going to help our channel grow and tap into what I think y'all want to hear from people that you want to hear it from. So I'm really excited about that. And we're going to maintain a balance. So we have a group and we're going to, we're going to go after that group of people to try and, you know, draw them into the show as a guest, a co-host, if you will. And, uh, and we're going to, we're going to stay grounded and balanced by having just your everyday riders. So if you have any crazy stories, street stories, I'd love to hear them. You can email me, teambravo210 at gmail.com. Or you can join our Discord. Link's on the channel. Look forward to it. That's it for this one, guys. A little bit longer, a little more narration and dialogue around the incident. Not trying to relive it. Just trying to conclude it, wrap it up. I look forward to hearing from you. I appreciate the support. And remember, if you're out riding, two wheels down, shiny side up. It's your boy, Bravo. And this one's a wrap, yo. Peace out. Can we do the... There's a hint. There's a hint.